Aloha, I'm Byron, owner of Kona Snorkel Trips. Today we're gonna go over how to clean your snorkeling gear. You went to the beach or you left your gear maybe someplace in the garage where it's all cobwebby and dusty and now it's time to clean it. So let's get started. The first step and the best way to clean snorkel equipment is first you get a bucket and you fill it with water. Now if you don't have a bucket to fill with water, then I would highly recommend just rinsing your gear. And that works pretty good too. Not quite as good as immersing it in a bucket, but it'll suffice. Next, you take your sensitive pieces, so your mask and your snorkel, and you immerse them in the water. Now at this point, you can let things soak for a little bit, especially if you have like a neoprene mask strap, kind of like this mask strap here, will help the water infiltrate and get rid of all the salt. But what's most important is that when you put your snorkel in, depending on the kind of snorkel, you definitely wanna make sure the water gets all in the snorkel. So this is a J-tube type uh, snorkel, and it's pretty basic. And basically, you know, all you have to do is put it in like so, and make sure the water goes all the way into the tube. Now, some snorkels are a little bit more complicated. This kind of snorkel here, it's got a floppy do on the top. That's what I call it, a floppy do. And sometimes these little floppy things will prevent water from getting into the snorkel. So if you put it in right side up, the water won't really go into the snorkel very well, or even upside down. So what's really important is that you put it in upside down and then underwater you can twist it around and make sure all the bubbles come out and really get that water into the snorkel really good. Also, you can get some sand. If you've been diving from shore or snorkeling from shore, you can get sand in these pieces of gear. So it's really important to kind of shake them around. And sometimes that will help knock the sand loose from the little mechanisms. You know, you'll get sand caught um, here in these little valves and sometimes here on top in the mechanism as well. After you're done with that, you can take your gear and you can hang it. So now what I like to do with my snorkel gear is when I hang it, I put it like so. So you can see here how it's hanging upside down and the mouthpiece is here in the spike. And then I do the same for the mask. I put the nose pocket here like so. And I do that because that basically um, gets all of the water out uh, where the water drips out the top of the snorkel and the water doesn't pool in the nose pocket in the mask and that way it'll get thoroughly dry. Ideally, maybe leave it in the sun for a little bit. If not, just make sure it's a well-ventilated place so that it dries more quickly. Um, if you leave it in a humid storage closet or something like that, it may not dry and if you're in a humid environment, it can get moldy. So yeah, and then you just throw your fins in Make sure the fins get all the way under the water. And fins are a little bit more durable, a little bit more robust. You usually don't have to rinse them as thoroughly as like a mask or snorkel. Um, just really get most of the salt water off and you'll be good to go. Okay, now that we've rinsed all of our small bits, we go on to the wetsuit. If you do have a wetsuit, really get that wetsuit in the water push it down, make sure all of the water gets into the suit, and it's almost like a massaging. Um, it's almost like you're making soup or something, uh, depending on you know how stinky your suit is, I suppose. Um, you kind of push it around and really make sure all that water gets into the suit. So you can kind of open the suit up and put water into it and lift it, and that will help really get water into the arms and the legs and really rinse that suit out very well. And then I take the suit out after I've rinsed it, maybe even let it soak for a little bit. Um, I'll take it out and I'll let it drip dry it. I'll usually try to hang it on a clothes hanger, clothesline, similar to this one here. And then once it's hung, let it dry on the one side. So in this case, it's the outside of the suit that's facing out right now. So we're just gonna let that dry pretty quick, you know, maybe a uh, few, few hours and then um, if, if you can. And then once, we, uh, once that dries, we're gonna flip the suit inside out and let the inside dry. And hopefully that happens overnight and then you can flip it back the other direction. Should be completely dry uh, after a day or two. And at that point, you can essentially just store it. Um, if you want, you can put it in a plastic bag, you can put it in a plastic container, or you can just leave it hanging. But make sure you use a hanger with really thick pads. 
Another thing about like storage is if you do have a mask, ideally you have a mask case like so. And with a mask case, you can store the mask in there like so. And it really helps protect the mask from getting damaged, from, uh, from getting crushed or lost. Uh, you can put your name on the mask case as well. So that's really key or important and nice to have um, if you do have a decent mask, a nice snorkeling mask. Ideally, you've got a case for it as well. Now, some pieces of gear, kind of like this uh, snorkel here, you can see the silicone is turning yellow. This will happen to uh, snorkel masks and to snorkels if they're made of like a yellow, of a white or clear uh, silicone material. What happens is the UV and just age will make it turn yellow. This you cannot clean. It's always going to be yellow. So ideally you purchase your gear in a black silicone or a colored silicone and it won't turn this funky color. The advantage of having clear though, is you can see if there is mold or anything else on the uh, inside the snorkel, which is kind of nice. Uh, so it's a nice advantage to have. Furthermore, you can remove some of these mouthpieces like I have here. Uh, you can see you know, what's going on inside and that should help you uh, sort out whether there is anything growing inside your snorkel. Ideally, you rinsed it and let it dry properly, so that shouldn't be a problem for you, right? Now for fins, we wanna make sure that the fins get dry and they also don't turn into a funny shape. So what's important with a fin is, usually if it's, if it's a plastic material, if you leave it bent for a long period of time, what's going to happen is that fin's gonna end up in that funny shape. So we don't want the fin to stay in a funny shape. So what we're gonna do is we're going to let it dry and then immediately put it away. And by putting it away, ideally it's sitting, laying down flat. That'll keep the fin flat. Uh, if the fin is leaning up against something for a long period of time or has something heavy on it, it will cause it to deform or warp. And um, that means that when you're using it, it'll be a funny shape. It'll perform different or weird. So when we're storing fins, we really just wanna leave them laying flat on the ground like this. You can see this fin was stored uh, upright and so you can see how it's kind of bent here a little bit a little cup of kai a little off so yeah we want to avoid that uh, by storing fins the right way so that when we go to use them years later days later months later they are in uh, proper shape one last pro tip for you guys if you have a bag nice thing about a bag is it keeps all your gear together whether it's wet or dry a mesh bag like this will allow your wet gear to kind of dry out and it won't get so stinky. So mesh bags are nice, you can hold multiple sets of gear. In here I have at least two sets of uh, different gear. Keeps everything together from getting lost and uh, it's just a nice, easy way to carry things if you have a lot of stuff, you know, sunscreen, etc. It really starts to add up after time. And they're relative, relatively inexpensive. If you wanna pick one up, go ahead and check out the uh, dive shop link below. You can go to Konohonu Divers and pick out uh, a, a proper bag um, to go with your gear. If you also, if you need gear, if you need replacement parts, anything like that, you can swing by the shop at Konohonu Divers and we'll be happy to help you out. Well, snorkelers, that's about all for today. If you guys have any questions about cleaning tactics, techniques, tips, or have anything to add, please leave it in the comments below. We'd super appreciate it. Also, you can check out the description below. And in the description, we have the, a guide with all of this information written down and way, way more information. We also have way more information on snorkeling, snorkeling tours, if you're interested in snorkeling in Hawaii, and just all kinds of content on our website and on our blog. So go ahead and check that out below, and we'll see you in the next video. Aloha.